As we prepare our hearts and minds to go into the Word on this morning, I want to pick up where I left off on last week, but we're going to go in a deeper direction is the term I'm going to use for the entire month of January as you begin the year 2021. The Lord has really impressed on my heart to speak to his people, to speak to particularly the people that I shepherd, that we need to learn to trust God. And especially given where we find ourselves in culture, in the community, it's very, very important that we understand what it really means to trust God. So I'm going to be here for this month. Um, I want to go a little deeper this morning. And the big idea of what I want to talk about this morning is just the simple truth Uh, trust resulting in obedience. And I'm just going to say it this way, because there's no other way to say it. If we trust God, we will obey God. So I want you to grab your Bibles this morning. We're going to jump into the Word. Um, Go with me to the book of Genesis chapter 22. And as you go there, I will look to God. We'll spend some time praying, and then we're going to dive right into the message um, so we can hear what God is saying to us This morning. So bow your heads with me. Let us look to God for a word of prayer as we go into the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would just speak through me. I empty myself. I want to be a vessel that's used by you, God. Felix, I say this every week, has nothing to say, but I only want to say what you want to say through me. So, God, I empty me and I open my heart to hear and to receive. I am praying that you would speak through me to someone who may be struggling with the issue of trust. I'm praying that we would all learn what it means to trust God given the pandemic, given where our country is, given the state that the world is in this morning. So Holy Spirit, as we open your word, I'm praying that you would speak plainly so we can hear, uh, grow us deeper, God, so we can rest peacefully in you. It is in your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen. Trust resulting in obedience. I'm trusting you're seeing that on the screen this morning. Trust resulting in obedience. Let me say this by way of an introduction as we go into our message. If we trust God, we will obey God. I want to say it again. It's two sentences. I'm saying two separate sentences. If we trust God, comma, we will obey God. There is no other way to say that. If I were to conduct a poll and to ask the majority of you this morning that are listening to me, do you trust God? It's almost without a certainty or without a doubt that every person listening to me will say, yes, I trust God. And I don't know that we fully understand what we're saying when we say, yes, I trust God. Because my follow-up statement or question would be, do you really obey God in every instance, in every circumstance? And then here's what the response is going to look like. Sometimes. It depends on the assignment. It depends on the task. But we say we trust God, but then the obedience to God fluctuate or is situational dependent. I want to say this as I go into the message this morning. To trust God, uh, we must obey God. So trust should always result in obedience. And I want you to hear me say this as I'm communicating. It's a growth trajectory. We're getting to a place where when we trust God, we must learn to obey God. So as we move into 20 and 21, as I stated Last week, God is calling us to a deeper level of trust in him. And I'm going to say it this way. I am not talking about a surface test, right? I am talking a trust, a, the level of trust and obedience that will cause us to say, hey, God, catch me. Or God will say to us, I'm going to give you that in a sermon in a little while, catch me. And we will do everything in our power to obey God. If you're wondering where that statement came from, you need to listen to the message from last Sunday. So the text we are studying today, it presents us with a true picture of what trust resulting in obedience is all about. I'm going to look at a very, very familiar passage of scripture, and I'm going to share 
two main points, but it's going to have several sub points in each one of the main points that I'm going to share with you. But I think you write those things down, get your pen and paper, put them out. I want to share some principles with you. I want to share with you some truths from the Word of God this morning that if you really want to grow and be what God would have us to be, I believe this Word is going to have impact on your life. So if you look with me at Genesis chapter 22, grab your Bibles and go with me to Genesis chapter 2. I'm going to take it in bite-sized chunks. I'm going to read a section, I'll exposit it, talk about it, then we're going to go on to the next section. So let me say this, though. It will more than likely take me about two to three sessions or sermons to preach this message in its entirety. And the reason I'm breaking it up that way is I want to communicate the principles such that they take root in your life and they get deep in you and we can learn what it means to apply them and to be all that God would have us to be. We're going to look at a fellow by the name of Abraham this morning. And it's a passage that you know well. And the passage really speaks to when God had called Abraham to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. And what you're going to see is God tested Abraham. We're going to look at all of this. And I want to use that passage in Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. But we probably will only stop at verse 5 this morning to teach us what trust resulting in obedience is all about. Now, let us read. Let me read the first two verses, then I'm going to make some points and I'll talk about this. Now, I'm going to say this because there are so many scriptures to read this morning. Those scriptures won't be on the screen, but only the points are going to be there so you can see what God is saying. So listen to verses 1 and 2, and I'm reading from the ESV. After these things, the Bible says God tested Abraham. And he said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And he said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains on which I will tell you. Now, I want to share two points um, this morning from all the passages that we're going to read. The first thing I want you to understand as we look at the text, here's the first big movement that I want you to understand. As a believer in, believer in Christ, we should trust God, not the vehicle of promise. I want to say it again. Okay, let me say this again. We should trust God as believers, not the vehicle of of promise. Now, I need to flesh it out because I want you to hear what the text is really saying. Look with me at verse 1. Notice what it says. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and here's Abraham's response, here I am. And look at verse 2. And so God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. Now, look at 1A. I want to share you point 1 here. You've got to hear me say this, that God will test our trust in him, okay? I'm going to say this, because we say we love God. It's important to know that sometimes God will put us through situations. God will put us through circumstance. God will put us through trials. God will put us through what he needs to put us through. And the reason for God doing that is not that he wants to be evil or he wants to be malicious or he wants to press us to fail. No, 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 no. He wants to check our level of trust in him, right? Now, notice the text says, after these things. If you were to read by way of literary context, what's going on in the text, you will see a series of events that have happened in the life of Abraham. And I'm going to talk about those in a little while that led up to the birth of Isaac. And Isaac is a very, very important character for what we're going to talk about this morning. Isaac now comes on the scene. Some series more events happen that results in where we find ourselves right now at the time of the text. So the author of Genesis is saying to us 
that once Mo- Abraham had gone through the series of events and God had done what God needed to do in the life of Abraham, he found himself now at a situation, at a place where God tested him. Now, I'm going to say this over and over again. As we continue on our trajectory to Christ's likeness, hear me, every time we come out of one situation and we go into another situation, hear me say this morning, God will test you. He will test the level of trust we have in him. And I want to say the trust that we have in God should always result in obedience. So if you've come through something and you find yourself going through another thing and you find yourself going through another thing, here's what I want you to hear me say at the onset of the message. After these things, God will test you. You got to hear that, right? And he's going to test really how much do you trust him? Because here's what we do. Woe is me. How much can I bear? Why do I keep going through? Why do I find myself in these circumstances? I'm telling you that the growth trajectory that God has for you and God has for me, he wants us to trust him. So after these things, be ready for the test, right? And when you come out of that, after these things, be ready for the test, right? And when you come out of that, After these things, be ready for the test. The goal is, though, the series of tests that we go through should always result in obedience. Now, here's here's the second thing. Here's here's 1B. Here's 1B. Okay, lock into this. The reason God will test us is God will test our trust in his transforming ability. Hear me say that, okay? Let Let me clarify. God will test... Our level of trust in God's transforming ability in our lives. My goodness, what what are you talking about, preacher? If you were to back up, if you were to back up to chapter 17 in the book of Genesis, here is the series of events that's going on now in the life of Abraham that resulted in after these things. Chapter 17 kind of opens up with God entering a covenant with a man by the name of Abram. Okay, listen to how I'm saying that. A-B-R-A-M. That's the shortened form. And here's what happens. God enters this covenant with this man by the name of Abraham, and then look at the transformation. God then changes his name from Abram to Abraham, right? And then God says to him in chapter 17 that I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to multiply your descendants. I'm going to make your descendants like the sand of the sea. You kind of get what I'm saying. But this was after the name change. After, listen to the term. You, you ought to notice by now if you've been hanging around restoration any length of time, the name speaks to the character. It speaks to who the person is. So when God changes your name, it means that God has completed a work or he is doing a work in you. The same is true when you follow chapter 17. His wife, her name was S-A-R-I. Sarai was her name. But then once again, because God had released a covenantal word and a word of promise over their life, her name was changed to Sarah. I want you to see where I'm going with this. And then God releases a word to say to them, Ishmael, I mean, Israel, I mean, I'm sorry, let me get it right. Isaac is going to be birthed out of that lineage. Now, you understand Sarah was barren, and you understand Abraham was an old man. Matter of fact, chapter 17 says he was 99 years old when the Lord released the word in his life. Now, here is where I am getting this transforming ability that God will test that. Here is what happens in chapter 22. Now, go back to chapter 22. God tested Abraham, and look at how God called him, Abraham, by the new name that God had assigned him. So he's testing his covenantal ability. Can you walk, Abraham, in the transformation that I just completed in your life? Lord, have mercy. Can you walk, Abraham, in the newness that I've created you to be? Can you walk, Abraham, in the greatness that I have in store for you? And you've got to hear me say that God will do the same thing for you, and he will do the same thing for me. There are times where God will call us. 
and he will test the transforming ability. Can we remain true to who God has called us to be or are we still in 2021? Listen to me flirting with who we were or who we used to be back in the year 2020. God is calling us to press through, right? So, and then lock into this, lock into this. Here, here's what he says. Not only will he test the transforming ability, Abraham says, here I am. And look at verse two. And then God says to him, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. And he says, go to the land of Mora, uh, Moriah, and offer him there as a sacrifice, right? Now, lock into the third thing that God would do, um, 1C. Here's the deal. God will test our trust in his word. Hear this, not the vehicle of promise. I got to stop there and slow down because I want this to resonate in your spirit. He will test our level of trust in his word versus the vehicle of the vehicle of promise. Here's what the text says contextually. Abraham, Abraham, and Abraham responds, here I am. Then verse 2 says, take your son. And then the text says what? Your only son, Isaac, and notice the phrase, whom you love. Now, most of you read in this text, you know this, and you'll say, well, that was not Abraham's only son. Abraham had two sons, at least at the time of the text. He had Ishmael, who was born through the, 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 his handmaiden, Hagar, and then recently from chapter 17 onward, Isaac is now on the scene. So how dare God say, take your only son? Now, I need to say this. You will understand with me, Ishmael was, was Abraham's attempt to realize the promise of God in his life. It was not God's doing. Ishmael was not God's doing. Ishmael was Abraham and Hagar's doing. You've got to hear me say that. So here's what God says. God said to him, I need you to release Ishmael, and God bless Ishmael, and God bless Hagar. He said, I need you to release them. And then all of a sudden, Isaac comes on the scene, and, and lock into this. If you read the text, here's what God says about Isaac. He says, through Isaac is the vehicle that I'm going to use to make your name great. Isaac then became the one that God wanted to use, the vehicle that God wanted to use to realize his blessing and to realize the word that he had received or that he had released over Abraham's life. So then here's what God says. Okay, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And then he says, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it through Isaac. And then all of a sudden, after these things had taken place, God then comes back on the scene and he comes to Abraham and he says to Abraham, I now need you to kill Isaac. My goodness. Now, if, if, if I'm Abraham and I know if you're Abraham and you've been praying for a long time, God, I need you to bless me with a car. And then God all of a sudden gets you a car and then he says, get rid of it, right? And then oh, maybe you've been praying for a home. God, I need you to bless me with a home. And then all of a sudden he gives you the home and he says, get rid of it, right? Or maybe you've been praying, praying, God bless me with a job. And then all of a sudden God gives you a job and then God comes back on the scene and he says, get rid of it, right? Now, now, the reason that God will do that and the reason that sometimes God will take us through those types of tests, listen to what I'm saying, is because he wants us to trust him, not the vehicle of promise. And the reason this is so important, because we could be praying for something. God may might have well said he wants to use you greatly in 2021 and afterwards. God very well may say he wants to do the miraculous thing. And he said, this is how I'm going to do it. And the danger is we start trusting the thing more than we trust God. You get it? And so sometimes, here's what God will do. He will come and test you to see if we trust God more than we trust the vehicle through which God is going to bless us. So here's what that looks like for you, and here's what that looks like for me, right? When God challenges us to get rid of the thing, when he challenges us 
to get rid of that which uh, he wants to bless us through, we start questioning, God, what are you doing? God, what is happening? God, what is going on? The goal of God is to get us to trust him, not the vehicle of promise. I want you to hear me say that. Now, what I like about the text is when I look at the text, there's really two levels of testing for trust that's going on in the text. At one level, God is testing Abraham um, for his level of trust in God. Now, look what's also nuanced, though not subtly, but, but it may be hidden in the text, and you've got to look to see this. To some extent, I like to see this, that Isaac's level of trust was being tested as well because as God trusted Abraham, listen to this, Isaac, I mean, as as Abraham trusted God, Isaac had to show a level of trust in his father as well. Uh, Let me say it again, let me say it again because y'all might have missed that. There's there's almost two levels of trust going on in the text. As Abraham trusted God, lock into this, Isaac had to trust Abraham. And, And the reason I want to point that out is because... As Abraham's trust in God grew, and listen to this, and Isaac saw how his daddy trusted God, not even knowing what was going on, when it came time for Isaac to step up to the plate in obedience to God, it was easier for Isaac to obey and trust God because his father modeled it for him. Now, why is that important? Here, this is free this morning. Your children are watching you. Your descendants are watching you. The people you are leading are watching you, right? And how we obey God based on how much we trust him is going to be the standard through which those we are leading, through which those who are following us is going to trust God. That's free, but just lock into that. I want you not to miss that. So here's what I've been saying. God will test our trust in his word, not the vehicle of promise. Here's D. Here's D before I go into section two. God will also test our ability to trust and follow him without the details. I don't know that you're ready for this one. Let me say it again. God will test our ability to trust and follow him without the details. Look at this thing. Look at the text. Look at the text. Look at the text. Here's what it says. I love verse 2. And he said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love. And look into this. Go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering. And watch this carefully. On one of the mountains of which I will tell you. Now, if, if, if you're Abraham and you're like me and you're looking at this text, the text is very vague because you might be wondering, well, how far is Moriah, right? When I get to Moriah, specifically God, where do you want me to go? Specifically, God, where is this location? And there is a level of ambiguity because it's, it's almost as if God is saying to Abraham, If you trust me, just leave. There was a song many, many years ago that says, one day at a time, Lord Jesus, is all I'm asking from you. God, if we trust God, he's calling us to follow him one day at a time. And and the reason a lot of us cannot trust God that results in obedience, here's, here's my problem. Before I do, I want to spend time getting all the details And lock into this. If you have all the details, that does not equate to trust in God. You got to hear me say this. Sometimes God just wants us to take the leap of faith and trust him. And then along the way, he shows us where we need to go. Now, that is a lot more difficult. It's a lot more challenging. It, It adds a whole nother level to the concept of trusting God resulting in obedience, right? Because here's what God said to him. Abraham, um, go take your son, take the vehicle of promise. Go to the region of Moriah. There's a bunch of mountains there. When you get there, I'm going to tell you which one. Imagine that, right? And then Abraham blindly, you got to hear me say this, blindly 
obeys, and he follows God. Now, why was Abraham able to do that? Because Abraham had some experience taking God at his word and trusting him blindly. You will remember, you remember when God called Abraham at the first time, right? God said to him, leave your land and go to this place that I'm going to show you. And what did Abraham do? He packed up and he left not knowing where he was going. The reason I failed the test of obedience, the reason you failed the test of obedience, because we have not obeyed God in the first step, and following God blindly is a challenge for us. Trust means if God speaks, I get up and I go, I obey, and I follow God where God is leading me. Here's what one hymnist says, where he leads me, I will follow. Is that your testimony today? Is that your story? Can you follow God in such a manner to go where God would have you to go? Look at the second thing. Look at the second things that I want to share with you this morning. And let me read verse 3 to 5, then I'll state them, then we're going to walk through it. Look at verse 3. <clears throat> verse 3 says, So Abraham rose early in the morning. He saddled his donkey. And he took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering. And he arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Look at verse 4. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to the young man, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. Now, let me slow down for a little bit. Number two is this. Our obedience is an indicator of our level of trust in God. Let that resonate, let that resonate for a little while. My obedience to God is an indicator of my level of trust in God. Your obedience is your indicator of your level of trust in God. Here it is. God spoke. Abraham trusted God's voice. And listen to the next step. Abraham obeyed. Trust resulting in obedience. God spoke. Abraham trusted God. And Abraham obeyed. Trust resulting in obedience. Here's an illustration from last week's sermon, right? Last week, I told you of Zach and his father that were in the wilderness. They were in going through the cliffs hiking. Dad goes one path and Zach goes to the higher level. And without dad's knowledge, Zach jumps. Dad says, hey, dad, catch me. And Zach jumps. And now daddy has to do everything in his power to find out where Zach is so he can catch him. Let's flip that a little bit. God now says to you, God now says to me, hey, Felix, jump. I've got you, right? I can say trust God all I want. But if I don't jump, if I don't take the leap of faith, knowing that God would catch me. Let me go here. If my trust does not equate to obedience, do I really trust God, right? And, and imagine, 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 put yourself in Abraham's shoes and God gives you the vehicle of promise and God blesses you. God had released the word and God finally shows you how he's going to do what he said he's going to do. And he says to you, hey, you jump. And then you're hanging on to the thing, but you're afraid to jump. You're afraid to trust God. You're afraid to go forth. And here's the thing with a lot of us in 2021, unless we learn to jump knowing that God is going to catch us, unless we're willing to take the risk of faith, unless we're willing to take the leaps of faith, unless we're going to trust the voice of God, we risk being held back because we really 
don't believe that God is going to catch us, meaning we are wrestling with obedience when it comes to trusting God, right? So here's what 2A says, right? Trust in God, it means quick obedience. Hear me. Quick obedience to God's word over your life, okay? Um, Look at the verse. Look at the verse. Look at the verse. I'm going to move quickly. Look at the verse in verse 3. It says, so Abraham rose early in the morning, not 12 days later, not after he fasted and prayed, not six months later, but early in the morning he got up, he saddled his donkey, and he took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac, and he cut the wood of the burnt offering, and and he arose, and he went to the place of which God had told him. Abraham, take your son the only son Isaac, your vehicle of promise, and offer him on the region of Moriah. In other words, lock into this. Abraham jumped. And Abraham, if this was the next verse, he jumped, right? That's amazing. Trust in God resulting in obedience. And I'm going to add this. Immediate obedience to God's word. Here's a quick application. Some of us are caught up in things we ought not be caught up in. And God is saying, leave it. And a lot of us are afraid to jump because we don't trust God like that. Trust resulting in obedience. If God says, get out, we jump. If God says, stop, we stop. If God says, leave it alone, we leave it alone. We don't wait. We don't allow time to lapse. Because if time lapses, we really don't trust God the way we say we trust him, right? Look at 2B. This is the second thing. I'm almost done here. Second thing says this. Time on the journey should never impact our trust or obedience in God. Let me say it again. Time on the journey should not impact our trust or obedience in God. Look at the text, right? Abraham leaves. And hear me. He's going to this place Uh, mountain in the land of Moriah. Now, from where he was in Beersheba to get to Moriah, it was over a three-day journey. So he walks with his mule. He walks with the fire for the wood. He walks, you're going to see this next week, with the knife in his hand. He walks with his two, the two, the two servants, the two young men. He walks, lock into this, with Isaac in his hand. And for three long days, Before he got to Moriah, he never lost sight of what God called him to do, right? He had three days to process what God says while he was walking in obedience. And here's the thing, time on the journey never deterred him. He stayed focused. He stayed lockstep. He stayed locked in with God, even though he had three days to think and process, am I crazy? Did I miss God? Do I know what God is saying? Now, the reason I want to point that out, because here's what happens to me and here's what happened to you. We start strong, but along the way, we lose momentum. We start hard, but along the way, we lose momentum. So hear me say this, time on the journey should never impact our trust and obedience of God. So some of us have been on this Christian journey for a very, very long time, and we've messed up along the way. In 2021, trust in God said it's time to repent and to reestablish obedience and to trust and believe God every step of the way. Now, let me say this last thing, and then I'm going to pick it up next week. Here's the last thing I want you to to hear me say, right? Obedience, this is the point, is an indicator of our level of trust in God. Now, let me leave you on a cliffhanger, right? So look at the text. Look at the text. Look at verse 5. Verse 5 kind of says it this way, right? Then Abraham, when they got to the place and he saw the distance, Abraham said to his young man, stay here with the donkey, I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. Say it again. 
Then Abraham said to the young men when they got to Moriah, the region of Moriah, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. Now, obedience is an indicator of our level of trust. I'm going to say this and we're going to pick this up next week, so don't, don't, don't lose this, right? God promised to bless Abraham. He promised to make his name great. Then he gives him the vehicle, Isaac, through which he was going to realize his promise. Then he says to Abraham, take the vehicle of promise, go to the land of Moriah, and offer it on a, as a sacrifice to, be, to you. Now, you need to notice about the text. Abraham had no idea that God was testing him. He had no idea that God was testing his level of trust in him, his faith in him. Abraham had no idea. But there was something about Abraham's walk with God that once God released a word over his life, Abraham believed God, Abraham trusted God, Abraham knew God's ability such that he was willing to obey God, trust resulting in obedience, and walk it out because of who he knew God to be. Now, here's what he said to the guys. When he got to the land of Moriah and he was about to begin his journey up the mountain, he says to him, you guys stay here. Keep the donkey. I'm going to take Isaac and we're going to go. And here's how he refers to the sacrifice and worship and worship. And then he makes this crazy statement and we're going to come back. Abraham, what was it in you that gave you the confidence that you're going to come back. Abraham, what was it in you that well, however this was going to work out, that you were so assured that you were going to come back? Here is, here is take this with you, and then we're going to pick it up next week, right? Abraham's confidence was not so much that he believed that God would resurrect Isaac. His confidence was his trust in who God's word is and the word that God has released over his life. Lock into this. God made Abraham a promise, and Abraham knew that God would never go back on his word. So don't make the mistake of thinking that Abraham knew that God would resurrect Isaac. No, 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 no. Abraham knew that God spoke and when God speaks, I trust God and I obey God. And if God said he's going to make my name great, if he said he's going to bless me, make my descendants have the sand of the sea, and if God says Isaac is going to be the vehicle through which all the descendants will be blessed, it's God's business how he makes that happen. And if God tells me, get rid of the vehicle because he is God, because he is sovereign, because he's supreme, because he is omnipotent, because he's omniscient, because he's all that. How he works it out, it's not my business. He said it. I know it's going to happen, but I'm going to walk in obedience. And we're going to pick this up next week because here's my problem and here's yours. God releases a word of our life. We say we trust him, but we have a hard time obeying. Number one, we want all the details we want the who, what, when, where, why. And then when God tells us to get rid of the vehicle and trust him more than the vehicle, we want to spend more time fasting and praying over the preservation of the vehicle versus trusting God. If God is calling you to give something up, obey him. He can replace it. If God is calling you to trust him in 2021, trust him. He's got you. Let your trust result in this year in obedience to God. Let your trust result in obedience to God. Let me pray with you this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your word has gone forth, we all wrestle with obedience. You're saying, jump, I'll catch you. And We say we trust you. But we're hanging on to the edges. We're hanging on to the rails. 
And some of us, God, it's been a long time since you've just said jumped, and we haven't jumped yet. So Holy Spirit, speak. Holy Spirit, move. Teach us to trust you with a level of trust that results in obedience to you. We give this word to you, God. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen.